Amen. So, <clears throat> I, by the way, I love this, um, whatever you want to call it, graphic up there. When we asked Christian to do this, um, we were going by Galatians 5, 16, where it says the flesh wars against the spirit. And for some reason, what came to my heart was tug of war. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, the spirit's pulling this way, the flesh is pulling this way. Um, and, and in fact, on the flesh part, he actually had like flames of fire and like, and Chris was like, I think that's a little too much. Just, let's just tone it down just a little. And I'm like, no, I love it. Let's put it back up there. When I'm up there, I want it up there, but I forgot to tell him that. So anyways, I, that's kind of more my personality. I'm like, no, black and white. It's, it, it is what it is, right? I mean, when we're, when we're dabbling, when we're in the flesh, we're in Satan's territory. I mean, come on. So anyways, I actually, I'm, was kind of struggling with how do I approach this? Like I'm a teacher. That's kind of, that's kind of my heart is to teach how to walk in the spirit. But to be honest with you, ultimately it's the Holy Spirit that helps us to walk in the spirit. Now I can give you wisdom. I can give you insights. I can give you understanding. I can give you the word of God and, and point and direct you in the right way. But Ultimately, it's the Holy Spirit that, that directs us and shows us how to stay and walk in the Spirit. So, Amen. but I'm going to attempt to at least give you some, some, some ideas, some pointers. Um, there's actually three things that I want to talk about. The first one is relationship with the Father. That is first and foremost. If you are not in relationship with the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, I don't, I don't even know how you do it, just to be honest with you. You have to know the Father. You have to know his heart. You have to be able to hear his voice. And then the second one is, is we have to renew our minds. We must renew our minds to the, with the word of God. This thing's so vital. It's so important. If you don't know what it says about you, and it, you don't know what it says about who you are and who he wants you to be, you're going to have a really hard time walking in the spirit. It's just not, it's not going to come through like you would like it to, just to be honest with you. You're, you're going to, there's going to be a lot of trial and errors in your life, which there already is enough of them. So why wouldn't we get into this and find out who we are? And then the third one is our own words. Whether we're speaking life or we're speaking death, are we agreeing with the Father? Are we agreeing with the Spirit? Or are we agreeing with Satan? Are we agreeing with the enemy? I mean, I, listen, I, and when I'm saying this, I love you. I am speaking to myself also. I, I am, sometimes I'm shocked what comes out of my mouth. It's like, ooh, did I, did I just say that? No. <laughs> but yes, I did. We have to realize, okay, that we are three parts. There's three parts to us. We are a three-part being. We are spirit, and if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that is completely perfect. It has everything that you need in Christ living on the inside of you. We are also soul. So we have a soulish realm, which is the mind, will, and emotions, which... Those, that's the gateway, right? It's literally the gateway of what's going to determine if we're walking in the spirit or we're walking in the flesh. It's what this is focusing on. And then we obviously, we have a body. This is, you know, this was made from the, the dust of the ground and that's where it's going to go back to when we die. So we have to realize that we are three parts and the most important part is the soul because it's the gateway. The thing of the mind is we have to realize that if you think that you're, you're going to be able to not have that connection with God, you're, not, you're just walking through life and you're not actually having that friendship, that, 
that abiding, which I'm going to actually talk about this in John 15. We have to abide. We have to remain and we have to dwell in him. Dwell. Think about that. What is, what is dwell? Dwell is to live in a specific place. Where do you live? Where do you dwell? Where's your dwelling place? Where's your home, right? And when you're in your home, let's face it, it's the best place to be. It's like we go on vacation, we love vacations and everything, but as soon as we get home from that vacation, what's the first thing we say? Oh, it's so good to be home, right? Is that not the truth? But you know where our home, our true home needs to be in the Father, in the vine. I want to read this. John 15, 1 through 12 says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so that they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message, by the words that he spoke, by the message I have given you. Remain, dwell, live in me, and I will live in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain, dwell in me. Yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who dwell, live in me, I will live in them and they will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So why do we try? Why do we do that? Think about it. There's so often, and then this is in my life too. It's like we go through life, we're going through the day, and before I know it, I'm been knocked to and fro because I've not really allowed myself to dwell and live in that place with the Father. We can do that. It is possible. I know that sounds crazy, like, oh yeah, sure, um, you know, every minute of every day, I can, I can be constantly having my mind on the Father. Yeah, yeah. If you had, let's, let's put it this way, if you had a friend that, that was with you all the time, right? You would be talking to that friend. You would be communicating that, with that friend. You wouldn't be ignoring them throughout your day. They would be with you. You'd be talking to them about what's going on in the day, right? You'd be sharing with them like, hey, I have an issue here, you know? What do you think? And of course, that friend would be more than willing to communicate back to you and to share with you what they see, maybe how they can help you, whatever. The Lord is our friend. The Father is our friend. He wants us to be, he wants us to befriend him. Yeah. We can do that. You can do that. You do that with your friends. Why can't you do that with the Father? Come on. Come on. Good word. So, apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not dwell in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such, such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain, if you dwell in me and my words dwell and live in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. And you know why that is? Because you're so connected. You're so in tune and you're so much in friendship with the Lord that what you want is what he wants, right? Right? It's not like, oh, God, I, I want a million dollars, you know? It, no, it's, it's he's going to give you the desires, and those desires will come to pass. That's right. Come on. Come on. Amen. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. Listen, there's a difference between a disciple and a Christian, okay? I mean, and like I said, just love me. A true disciple is a true follower. A true follower. It's somebody who dwells in and lives with the Father. 
a Christian is somebody who, you know, they've accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and they come to church on Sundays and, you know, when things are tough, they might pray or, you know, I mean, they're on their way to heaven. I, they're going to make it, but they're not going to enjoy the journey, right? Disciples enjoy the journey because we're doing it with the Father. That's huge. Come on, come on. Good I mean, let's face it. There's times I have not enjoyed my journey, but you know what I've enjoyed? And there's been some tough times lately in our lives, but you know what I'm enjoying? I'm enjoying every minute of it because I am connecting with the Father. And I know he's with me. He's giving me wisdom. He's giving me knowledge. He's giving me understanding to walk this out. Even when things don't look like I want them to look. Come on. Amen. When you obey my commandments, you remain, dwell in my love just as I obey my Father's commandments and dwell in his love. I have told you these things so that you will be full, filled with my joy <laughs> and your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. As we dwell and live in the word in relationship with the Father, we will be his disciples. It will just happen automatically. And we'll walk in the spirit. It's sometimes we make things so difficult and so complicated. Why do we do that? It's, it's, it's not the do's and don'ts of Christianity, people. It's just not. God's grace is sufficient for, for that, some of that junk. Why do we focus and dwell so much on that? Stop. Don't do it. It's, it's, it's so much easier than we make it. Stay in that vine. Allow yourself to be able to feed off of, of that tree that goes down deep into the roots that, that comes back and then fills us with all that we need to produce the fruit that he's called us to do. Amen. Amen. I want to be a fruit giver. I want, I, want, I want to be one of those big old fruit trees that, that, that there's tons of fruit in the trees and there's tons on the ground. It's just everywhere. That's what I want to do for him. That's what I want to be for him. But I can only do that if I stay in relationship with him. And I continue to draw off of the vine and stay in the vine. And don't allow myself to get severed or cut off in any way, shape, or form. Because I'll tell you what, in fact, I just did this. Chris was very proud of me. I spent three hours out literally with a chainsaw cutting bush and trees. I mean, trees that are about like this big, guys. I'm out there just, nee. seriously. And then what I did is, because I didn't know what to do with them, I just threw them in this great big pile out in the woods so nobody could see them because I didn't know what to do with them. Uh, but here's the interesting thing. That pile was huge by the time I got done. I'm like, oh no, this is, everybody's going to be able to see my pile because it's like, I don't know what to do with it. I can't push it any further back. But you know what? After about, what, two, maybe three weeks, that pile is like this big now because you know what's happened? It's, it's dried up. The leaves are no longer on it. Everything is just shrinking. And so now it'll be, we'll be able to actually probably maybe, I don't know, burn it. <laughs> be good. But here's the thing. Don't, don't allow yourself to be cut off from the vine. It's the only way to truly walk in the spirit is by staying connected to him. You know, a lot of times we try to, um, you know, we, we read things, we read books, we read books of how, how we do this, how we walk in the spirit, how we, you know, don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. We read all these things, these things that we're supposed to do in Christ, right? And which is good. I, I think we should be doing that. I think we should be getting knowledge, getting wisdom. The Bible says to do those things, right? It's very important. But... If you think that there's some kind of formula that's going to get you there, 
That's not how it works. It's not how it works. And, you know, I know there's people, and I've heard this, and I know, Shauna, you have said this, fake it to make it, right? I don't agree with that philosophy. I just don't agree with fake it to make it. Don't fake it. Just get into the fo- get into the vine. Get into him. Just say, all right, Father, I am way over here, and I want to be with you. That's all you have to do. There's no faking it. You don't have to fake that. That's simple. And once you do that, the Father's going to minister to you. He's going to love on you. He's going to help you to be able to do what it is he's called you to do. One thing the flesh loves to do is it wants to arrive. It wants to be there. Right? You know, we think, okay, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, and, and then I'm going to be there. <laughs> Give me a break. You ain't never going to be there until the day you die and go home and be with Jesus. Amen. Then you'll be there. But while you live in this earthly body with this mind... Seriously, it's like you're not going to arrive, but you stay in that vine. And I'll tell you what, you will live a victorious, glorious life. You will. You can't lose. You can't lose with him ever. You know, it talks about you know, that, that, we're, that he'll purge us, right? Well, I, I looked at that word and what it, like, what it means, what it's connected to. Purge is synonymous with clean. So as we go about our lives, he will see the areas that need to be shored up, that need to be cut and cleaned and 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 this part, oh, that needs to go. Or, you know what I mean? It's like, we don't have to try to muster it up ourselves. If we're in him, he will just begin to show us things. You know, just a couple weeks ago, to be honest with you, and I've been really, since this new year, I have really just been um, digging in to all that he has for us. Because he's such a big God, and sometimes I just feel like I've just been living this low-level life of, you know, good enough. I don't, I don't want that. I want everything that he's purposed for me. Yeah. All of it. I want him to be the big God he is in my life. But, <laughs> um, so I've been asking him. I've been saying, listen, Lord, I just, I want to do what, it, you know, show me when I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing. Just, just, just show me. And there was a situation that came about a couple weeks ago, and it was something I heard about somebody. And I was like, this person, I was kind of like, eh, you know, I, I wouldn't say they're my favorite person. <laughs> but anyways, I, I love them. I, it's just mm, not my favorite person. And I was like, gosh, you know, it was something not good that I heard about him. And I kind of was a little bit like, well, that's what they get. <laughs> you know, I, that's so wrong. It's so wrong. I know it is. Yes, I know. And I knew it when I was thinking it, just to be honest with you. I knew all this. So this all happened, transpired in about a 24-hour span, right? Um, and so I, I did, I repented as I, oh God, I'm sorry. I, you know, I repent. I just, you know, speak blessing on that person and prayed for him for a second. The next day comes along and I was like, you know, started coming back up to me and the enemy loves to do that, by the way. He's like, yeah, but you know, so anyways, I'm like, yeah, I, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to tell somebody about this and just to see what they say. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so I was just like, no, don't do that. Yeah, do that. So here we go. Flesh and spirit. Right? So, anyways, sure enough, I, you know, open my big mouth, you know, and say this thing. And the other person was like, Yeah, that's that's tough. Man, we need to be praying for them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's true. We do. <laughs> it, it's like, it's like, and I got so convicted 
<laughs> and just, I just ran to the father and I said, man, I just, I repent. And yet I knew I was, I knew I was dealing with this flesh and spirit thing. I knew what was going on in my spirit, but yet I gave in and did what my flesh wanted to do. Instead of saying, father, help me. I want to stay in the vine. I just love this person. I pray for this person. That's really the direction I should have went. I didn't, but I did learn a really good lesson. And I was able to at least tell this story to you today. <laughs> Good example. <laughs> so, yes, he will purge us. He will clean us up. You know, he's just so good and he's gentle. You know, some people are like, oh, you know, this hurts or that hurts. You know what? That really didn't hurt me so bad as it was like, you know better. You just know. Man, is it warm in here or is it just me? Maybe it's I don't know. Anyway, I was the, yeah. Anyways. The word of God. It's our life map, right? We'll never, ever know who we truly are until we read about what it says and who it says that we are and whose we are, which is so amazing, the most amazing thing of all. We are children of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the creator of this universe. We get to be a part of that. Wow, that's amazing. But you know how many people don't pick this up every day? I was one of them. I was one of them. Chris and I, when we first got saved, we, listen, we loved God. We, you know, we knew we were saved. We knew we were on our way to heaven, but we weren't really digging in. We weren't really doing, um, we weren't hungering after the Father, hungering after the Word. And we just, we were going around in circles and we were so broken that we, we were like, we either need to start finding out who we are and what the word says, or we're not, it's just, we're not gonna make it. It's just not gonna happen. And so we started getting in the word. We started praying, praying in the spirit. It's a huge one, by the way. I'm not gonna talk about that. I know it's kind of my thing and then I like to talk about it. Maybe Chris will mention it next week, but praying in the spirit. We would literally turn off all the phones and that's when they used to be on the wall. So it wasn't really that hard. You just took it off the hook. Um, we would shut the blinds and we would just pray in the spirit. And then we would listen to a teaching tape, a, a really good word person, you know, just diving into the word. We'd read the word and then we'd pray in the spirit. And then we'd all day long because we knew we were so broken that we needed that. We needed to be filled. We needed to know and find out who we were and what it is he had for us. So I highly suggest you get into this word. This word's amazing. You will fall in love with it. I have fallen in love with God's word. I love to read his word. Amen. And I can't say that in the beginning, but if you will just start, you'll fall in love with it. It's beautiful. Amen. Amen. Dwell, live there. <clears throat> Isaiah 26 and three says, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all those whose mind is stayed on you. Psalms 1, 2, and 3 says, but delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all that they do. Listen, this says right here that we can keep our minds stayed on him, that we can meditate on his word. Whatever situation, whatever circumstance you're going through, find out what the word says and just begin to just have that there. Have it in your mind. Have it. Lord, show me more about this. Give me more wisdom in this area. Help me with direction. Help me with understanding. You know, I think, this is what I think. <laughs> I believe there's so much the Father wishes that we would come to and ask him, 
but we don't. He wants to pour into us. He desires it. We're his children. If you're a parent, do you not desire to spend time with your children to teach them, to, to, to help them? Absolutely. The Father so much more wants to pour into us, but we aren't, we're not going to him. And he's a gentleman. He will not violate our will. We also have weapons, weapons. Second Corinthians 10, three through five says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Listen, we have been given authority. We have been given weapons that we can use throughout our day, throughout our weeks, throughout some of the horrible, hard things we fight against. We have the ability to pull those things down. We have the ability to take those thoughts captive and say, no, I'm not going to think this way. I pull that thing down. I bring that into obedience of Christ. And that's what I did that, that day after I, I decided I was going to do what I was going to do. I eventually got real smart and said, no, I'm not doing that. I am going to pray for this person. I am not going to speak death. I'm not going to speak. I'm not going to gossip. I'm not doing this. That's garbage. So we have the ability, everything, we have it all. It's been given to us. You can't fail. You can't fail. Isn't that amazing? You know how many people are afraid to fail with with Christ, with God, with his word, with his truth, with what he has given us, you can't fail. Wow. Go out and do those things that you're desiring. What promises has God given you? What things are in your heart that you would love to do and love to run after, but because you're afraid of failing, you're not doing it? Do it with him. I will say this, and this is sometimes this is the things we don't want to hear. If you truly want to walk in the spirit, it's going to take some effort on your part. Amen. I know that's tough, <laughs> but it's going to take effort. You're going to have to press in to the things of the spirit. You're going to have to. You're going to have to desire and want to do what God wants to do. You know, it's a, a lot of Christians do this, and, and Chris and I did it. We would come in, we would sit in the back of the church, we'd hear the word, and as soon as it was over, we'd run out the door, and we'd go live our lives for the rest of the week and do it all over again the next Sunday. We weren't really walking in the Spirit. We were walking in circles, but we weren't walking in the Spirit. It takes effort. It takes a desire. It takes a want. You cannot sit back passively and expect to walk in the spirit. Sorry, that was the not fun part. But guess what? You can ask God to help you. You don't have to do it alone. He's not saying do it alone. He just wants your input. He wants your will in it. Listen, your heart will get hard if you don't stay running after him, if you don't stay, stay in this word, if you don't start doing some of the things I'm talking about, your heart will grow hard to the things of God. It's just, it's just a, it's a natural thing that happens. Our minds will begin to generate and start thinking like the world because we're not 
coming against that. We're not putting in the things that need to be put in that God wants us to know and hear. We'll begin to think like the world thinks. We'll begin to see like the world sees. And you will grow cold and your heart will grow hard. Don't allow that to happen. God wants all of you, not just part of you. He wants every part of you. He wants all of it. That's right. Good word. Come on. Amen. So, ugh, the last thing here, <laughs> the last key is your mouth. Your mouth will cause you to walk in the flesh or in the spirit. The greatest weapon you have is right under your noses, literally. It's your mouth. The ability to bless and curse. It has the ability to bring life to a person's circumstances or situations, or it can tear a person down and cause circumstances and situations to deteriorate and grow worse. We can either agree with God or we can agree with the devil. It's totally up to us. In order to change our minds, we must change our internal and our external speech. Proverbs 18.2 says that life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. When we're walking in the Spirit, it causes us to agree with God's Word. It's very important that you know what this Word says, though. Just saying. It says, we are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We have the blessings of Abraham. We have the bless that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And that whatever we put our hands to will be blessed, will succeed. And that's just a like a percentage of what's in here that we have, that we can do. It's so big. It's so big. Let's start agreeing. Let's start agreeing with him. Let's start agreeing with what he says. Begin to dream. Begin to see yourself differently. I will tell you right now, I would not be up here right now if I hadn't gotten in agreement with God and I allowed fear to control me. That's right. Come on. I wouldn't be up here. What are you speaking over yourself? What are you listening to and declaring over yourself. Are you declaring what the doctor said about you? Are you in agreement with that? Or you are, are you in agreement with this? Are you in agreement that by the stripes of Jesus, you're healed and there's no other answer? Watch your mouth. It's so vital. Speak life. Speak life over yourself, not death. Speak into who you are. Speak into what it is you desire. You know, God wants us to dream big. He wants to be a big God for us. A lot of times we keep him this little small God. We keep him in this little box and we say, yeah, I can do this. But, you know, if I I go any bigger than that, then I'm going to have to believe God for it. Yes. But he wants us to. He wants us to. He wants to experience. He wants us to experience all he has for us. Spend time with him. And listen to him. He wants to tell you great and mighty things. He wants to tell you who you are. He wants to give you dreams and visions. He wants you to walk out what he's called you to. Who you are called to be. Don't settle for less. The band can come up. But to believe God at his word and to begin to declare it and begin to declare it over your life, make sure it's lining up with the spirit, which the spirit will give us wisdom and what on what it is that we do have. And there's so many good things in here, you guys. I can't even it, there, I would have been here, I'd be here all day trying to tell you how many good things are in here that are that are spoken over you that he's called you to. Our words have the power to hurt, to heal, to open minds, to open hearts, to change the world. Never forget the responsibility that you have over the words you speak. You know, the Bible says, train up a child the way they should go and they won't depart from it. 
sometimes it's tough being a parent. Sometimes it's not so easy because, you know, it's like they'll drive you crazy sometimes. You're like, you little blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. You little blessing, you are called of God. You are going to do great and mighty things. We shape lives as parents, by the way. What you speak to your children matters. Chris and I are actually learning to speak a lot less because if we don't have anything good to say about something or someone, we keep our mouths shut. It's a little harder for Chris, a little more challenging for him than me because he likes to talk a lot. (laughs) So... Proverbs 10 and 19 says, too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. Oop, like I should have kept my mouth shut a couple weeks ago. Should have kept that big thing shut. Um, Okay, on the other hand, we can speak death, but we can speak life. Take the authority that you've been given. You have been given authority. Speak life over yourself. Speak life over others. I've been doing this thing with um, speaking and declaring, and I and think I think the last time I was up here, I was talking about this this um, experiment that this doc, or this psychologist psychologist or somebody did, where he took three bowls of rice and he spoke blessing over one. He didn't speak anything. He ignored the other one and he cursed the other one. And the one he blessed, like just gave off this beautiful aroma. It looked gorgeous. It looked, it it smelled wonderful. The one he ignored just molded and rotted. And the one that he spoke death over just, it just was nasty, nasty and gave off a horrible smell. And I thought, you know what? I am going to test this. I'm going to experiment my, do a spir- experiment myself. I have this tree that, um, and you can bring up the first picture. I have this tree. <laughs> you can't see it very well, but, and I'd already started praying over this tree. Everybody told me this tree was gone, that it was gonna die. I might as well pull it up at the roots. It wasn't gonna make it. I trusted who I trust, who is Mr. Dave over there. He knows all this stuff about gardening. He's like, nope, that thing is not gonna make it. I asked our guy who does our lawn and all that stuff. He's like, nope, that thing is not gonna make it. It's just, it's gone. It got some kind of disease last year and it just like lost all everything. So this is actually two weeks in. I started started going out and speaking over this thing, laying hands on it and blessing it and telling it its roots were going to be strong, that it was going to grow, that it was going to be beautiful. I mean, I just started speaking things over. I actually call, I was like, you're beautiful, honey. You're going to, I mean, I was doing like all this stuff. My kids are like, you're, you're losing it, mom. You're losing it. But I did. I was just like, you are going to be beautiful. You are going to grow. You are going to be healthy and strong. This was, this started in, at June, in June 1st. June 1st, I started doing this. And it already, I'd forgotten to take a picture before I started. But it's already, you can see some things that are starting to sprout on this side. One whole half was completely dead. Bring up the other picture. This is now. Yes. This is now. This is literally like six weeks. This is what's happening. This tree is growing. Life is coming it back into its, its roots and its branches and it's starting to offshoot new branches. And that disease that was on it, it was a scaly, nasty stuff. It's almost completely gone. This is how powerful our words are. It was fun to do this experiment. I suggest you find one to do <laughs> because it, it shows the power of our words. It's so important. <sighs> Let's just pray, because I'm way over my time. I'm so sorry. Father, help us to stay committed to living in the vine. Help us to understand that you have so much more for us. If we'll just agree with you, if we'll dwell in you, show each and every one of us what it is, to what you have in store for us, Your word says that eye has not seen and ear has not heard what the Lord has prepared for those who love him. It says, Lord, that you will show us your deep secrets. So Lord, reveal them to us. Reveal them to us. Show us the deep things that you want us to know so that we can walk them out, so that we can change the world. 
In Jesus' name, amen.